about probability distributions and we're not going to solve actually any problems in Alex but let's just spend a few minutes talking about what one is because students would often say well you know we have all these problems and we have to figure out all these things about probability distributions like mean standard deviations um, all these facts but we really don't know what one is what is a probability distribution anyway and so this is going to be about that First of all, let's take something that we know, like rolling a die. Now, you've had that in the probability section, and so you know that this die can roll in six different ways. And basically, the first part of a probability distribution, expressed as a chart, is simply going to tell us, under the x column, what it, uh, what it is that can happen. So this die can roll a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and nothing else. So these are all the possible outcomes from an experiment that we could have. Now over here under the probability column, we will simply list the probability that each one of those things has of happening. So the chance of getting 1, as we've talked about before, is going to simply be 1 out of 6. And in this case, the probability is really quite easy uh, to calculate for all of them because they're all going to be 1 out of 6. As long as the die isn't uh, weighted or isn't uh, in some way unfair, the probability is going to be evenly distributed. Hence the idea of a probability distribution. It simply tells how the probabilities are distributed among the different numbers. So that's, uh, that's the first thing that we would want to look at. Okay, and filling the rest of that out, you can send the probabilities for each of those rolls is 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, all the way down. Now, notice, too, that if you added up all of your probabilities, this would have to total 1, that we would say in math talk that the summation of the probability of x's here have to be 1, because this is just another simple way of saying that there's a 100% chance that something's going to happen. Okay, one of these numbers, 1 through 6, always occurs. It never uh, actually lands on edge or it doesn't land on a one corner it never does that it always lands in one of these six ways and so in the normal fair uh, type of die that we think about this probability distribution is going to be equally distributed with one sixth uh, for every one of those numbers but that is not necessarily always the case sometimes people have accused me of playing with crooked dice and that's uh, kind of what we have here but let's take a look at this die for example now this die seems reasonable enough but notice that when you roll it you notice something a little unusual here we seem to be getting a lot of sixes and the reason for that is if you look at this die carefully there's a six there there's a six there there's a two there and there's a two there in fact the only numbers on this dice are two and six and if you count carefully what you will notice here is that there are one two three sides that have a six and so the chance of that happening of course would be three out of six which would be one half and the other possibility is that you would roll a 2. In fact, if you look carefully at this die, you'll see there's a 2 there, there's a 2 there, and there's a 2 there. And so you can get then basically three ways of getting a 2 and six ways total or one half. And notice then that the other numbers simply don't come up. And so what happens here is that these probabilities are zero. Once again, we can see here that the total probability, the summation of the probability of x is equal to one, just like before, because all of these probabilities, there's a 100% chance uh, that something happens, but what's going to happen half the time is that we get a two and the other half of the time we're going to get a six. Now, let's take a minute here and look at another way of expressing a probability distribution. 
and we can also express a probability distribution as a graph or in a sense a relative frequency histogram because you've worked those now in the yellow slice. This one here is one die but instead of the theoretical probability obtained by counting the sides what we've done here is we have done a simulation on a computer of actually rolling one die 5,000 times and the computer can do that again really fast so let's roll uh, one die 5,000 times and see what happens and you can right away see that the uh, lengths of the bars change slightly but not very much. So in 5,000 rolls, the probability of actually rolling a die 5,000 times turns out to be very close to this theoretical probability of 1 sixth, which as a decimal would be 0.1666666 forever. And if you look at the tops of these bars, you will see that in 500 rolls, the actual probability turns out to be very close to that. We can repeat that as many times as we like. You can see that there are minor details. Notice here that the the sum of every one of these bars has to total one if you took the time to do that. Let's um, look at another situation that's pretty common to most folks. And that would be the probability of rolling two dice, as you would do, let's say, in Monopoly. So if you had your two dice and you rolled them, you can see here that what we might get is a 7. And so you'd say, well, what's the chance of that happening? What is the chance of a 7? Now, if you go back to your chart that you had back in the die rolling example in the blue slice, the probability slice, and you would count the 7s, what you would notice is that there are six different ways to get a 7. So the probability of rolling a 7 is 6 out of 36, which turns out to be 1 6 or 0.16666, repeating as a decimal. The chance of getting a 2 when you roll two dice. There's only one way to do that. The chance of that happening, 1 out of 36. And if you take your calculator, you can take that 136 and make that into a decimal. And so 1 divided by 36 turns out to be 0 0.0277777 forever to get that probability. You could go through and complete that on each of those numbers for the, uh, the numbers that can roll up on two dice, 2 through 12, but I've already done that for you. Let's take a second and look at expressed as a chart. Or in this case, you can see that we've expressed this as a graph. And so down here at the bottom are the x's. These are the numbers that can occur when you roll two dice. Up on these sides then are these relative frequencies or the theoretical probability of rolling two dice. Once again, in order to get a 7, there's six ways to do that out of 36. So 6 divided by 36 is 0.166666 forever. And what we've done here on the spreadsheet is to round that to the fourth decimal place. Likewise, the chance of rolling a 12 there's only one way to do that out of 36 and as we saw then that that probability is about 0 0.027 and so on. Here's all the different probabilities so this becomes the probability distribution. A probability distribution is just a way for us to show what can happen and how those probabilities are distributed. So that says that there's a much bigger chance of getting a 7 when you roll two dice than there is getting any of the other values. In fact the lowest probabilities then are getting two and 12. So a probability distribution is a chart or a graph that shows how the probabilities for things are distributed. Now, of course, the real world often functions a little bit different from the theory, but here is an example of a two dice roll done 500 times. This is a computerized simulation, and notice that we don't always get exactly the same probabilities when we roll the die 500 times. But as we would roll the die, say, 5,000 times or 5 million times, it would come much closer and closer and closer to those theoretical probabilities. Once again, you can notice that all of these probabilities are going to have to total 1 to give our relative frequencies a total of 1, as they did in the yellow slice. And notice that each individual one of these bars is always going to itself be a fraction between 0 and 1. So this is, uh, once again here, a dice simulation done by computers uh, for rolling two dice 500 times. Notice the distribution uh, follows very closely the theory that we have.